Today we are making a kale salad with roasted butternut squash, sautéed apples, pumpkin seeds and balsamic shallot vinaigrette. A friend of mine, Serena, brought it to our house on Thanksgiving many years ago and now I can't imagine Thanksgiving without it. I know that Thanksgiving is long gone, but I'm not very good with holiday themed content and I didn't want to wait another year to give you this wonderful recipe. It's just as good for Valentine's Day as it is for Thanksgiving, so I hope you try it. When I really love a dish, I always imagine serving it to some great chef. The imaginary chef guest for this salad is Yotam Otolenghi. His food is all about contrasts and that's what this salad is all about. Cooked versus raw, creamy versus crunchy, sweet versus acidic. I once heard Yotam say that a bowl of creamy soup with no accents would be his idea of hell. <laughs> we are definitely on the same page about hell, so I am guessing we'd be on the same page about the salad too. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees and set the rack close to the bottom of the oven. Trim the top and bottom of your squash. This gives you a flat surface so that the squash doesn't wobble when you cut it in half. Let's scoop out the seeds. Peeling squash doesn't have to be hard if you go about it in a smart way. The skin is very smooth and it's very hard to cut through it with a peeler if you start in the middle of the skin. But if you start at the edge of the skin, your peeler will cut right through. Divide the squash into the hollow part where the seeds used to be and the solid part. Cut the squash into planks, then sticks and then dice. Butternut squash is such a hard vegetable, so I'm not using a claw grip and instead using my left hand to push on top of the blade to help it cut through the squash. Since the squash has a tendency to stick, you can line the baking sheet with parchment paper, but that's completely optional. Put the squash into a large bowl, add some black pepper, salt, and a quarter cup of olive oil. Toss really well and pour onto the baking sheet. Don't wash the bowl, just wipe it out and you can use it later for mixing your salad. Spread into a single layer. Keep in mind that it does have to be a single layer, so if your squash is really huge, you might have some leftovers. Put the squash on the bottom rack and let it cook for 30 minutes. While the squash is roasting, let's prep the apples. Peel two Honeycrisp apples or some other variety that holds shape well and doesn't turn into applesauce as soon as you start cooking it. Cut the flesh off the core and cut it into cubes. We'll also need some chopped thyme. The exact amount is not important, so eyeball it. Take the thyme leaves off the stems and mince them. Set a large skillet that can hold your apples in a single layer of a medium heat. Add a couple tablespoons of olive oil and wait for them to get hot. Add the apples and thyme. Toss to distribute evenly and cook without disturbing until the apples brown. When you get some color, mix and leave them alone again to get more browning. Be patient and don't crank up the heat. You want to give the apples a chance to get completely tender and you don't want to burn them. When your apples are brown all over and tender, when you pierce them, they are done. Let's see how squash is doing. I've got a lot of color on the outer pieces, but some of the inner pieces are still completely pale. I think the best thing to do at this point is to take out the super brown pieces, redistribute what's left over and continue cooking it for another 7 to 10 minutes. Now all my squash is looking good and we can move on to kale. The type of kale I'm using is Lacinato kale. It also goes under the name of Tuscan kale or Cavolo Nero. It's typically softer than the curly kale variety and works better in a salad. 
I removed all the stems and washed and dried the leaves. Before you pick up your knife, use both hands to make a tight bundle of leaves. Hold them with a claw grip. Pick up the knife and start slicing. The smaller your pieces, the less work your teeth will have to do. Then switch to a mincing hold where your claw grip hand goes on top of the knife and cut perpendicular to your original cuts until you break the kale into bite-sized pieces. Move the kale into a bowl and let's work on the dressing. Cut up a couple of shallots. The exact amount is not that important, but you want to end up with about 3-4 to four tablespoons of minced shallots. Start by dicing them just like onions and then mince. Put 1 tablespoon of balsamic vinegar into a small bowl. Add half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and a generous pinch of salt. Whisk until the mixture is completely smooth. Then whisk in two tablespoons of olive oil in a very slow stream. By the way, note the shelf lining I have under my bowl. It's the same thing I use to stabilize my cutting boards. It helps hold the bowl in place while I'm pouring and whisking. Until I grow a third arm, it's a very useful piece of equipment. If you don't have any shelf lining, you can set your bowl onto a damp paper towel. Once all the oil is in, your dressing should be silky and thick. Stir in the shallots, pour onto kale, toss to distribute evenly, and mix aggressively. You don't need to be gentle with kale. Kneading it with your hands will help tenderize it. Add the squash, the apples, and toasted salted pumpkin seeds or some nuts. Once the squash goes in, you have to be gentle so that you don't turn it into baby food. <laughs> Gently toss the salad, taste it for salt and acidity, and serve. You can apply this wonderful pairing to many vegetables. Remember the sunchokes with chard salad I made recently? It's the same basic idea. Combine a raw leafy green with a soft roasted vegetable and watch the sparks fly. Since there is a good bit of work involved in making this dish, I wanted to talk about what can be made ahead. The squash and apples should be at room temperature or at most lukewarm by the time you serve them, so they can be made many hours ahead. Kale is very sturdy, so it's perfectly fine to dress it about an hour before serving, maybe even longer. Giving it a bit of time to sit and soak up the dressing will only make it tastier. The only thing I would save for the last minute is combining the dressed kale with all the other ingredients. A word of advice to my viewers who are not located in the US. Your kale might be very different from what I am using. While I was teaching online cooking classes during the pandemic lockdown, I learned that some countries only sell very thick, mature kale, which can be too chewy in a salad. In that case, you can try using any salad green that you like. This could work with frisée, arugula, spinach, escrow, or whatever greens taste good raw where you live. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.